Now reptiles like the blue tongue skink, bearded dragon, and leopard gecko are gonna be some of the easiest reptiles to tame down. With just a little bit of work, you can have an animal that just likes to explore on you, crawl around without too much effort, and definitely no damage being done. However, that's not where we're gonna talk about today. We're actually gonna be talking about the opposite. These are gonna be the top, whoa, whoa, whoa. these are gonna be animals that are gonna be very difficult to tame down, and some might say nearly impossible to. That's right, it's going to be the top five most difficult reptiles to tame down. There you go. Good job. So yeah, that's the video for today. Stick around, we're gonna be talking about some amazing animals and subscribe if you're new. We'd love to have you around. Just a brief disclaimer before we get this video started. I am not stating that any reptiles on this list are gonna be impossible to tame down and that you can never get a tame animal out of the reptiles we'll be talking about. I understand there are also going to be outliers in this list and people may have no difficulties taming this down. This video is just for the people that are interested in these certain reptiles and might not want to face what some would say an overwhelming task in trying to tame these animals out when you can get stuff like a blue tongue skink that would make it just a little bit easier. Kicking off this list, we're gonna be starting with number five, the Veiled Chameleon. Now, of course, there are a variety of different chameleons you can own in the reptile hobby. Some they say Jacksons, Panthers, Pygmies, and Veils, just to name a few. However, it seems to be the case that the Veiled overall seem to have, well, the most grumpy personality, and all in all, really either refuse or just don't tolerate being handled very much. Of course, chameleons in and of themselves are really a species that are more of a display pet and more of a kind of a look, don't touch type situation. However, it does seem that a select few of this species can be a little bit more forgiving when it comes to handling and things of that nature. And if you're looking for an animal that is going to warm up for you a little bit, the Veiled Chameleon really just isn't the one. <laughs> Definitely a big shame, because the Veiled Chameleon is just a stunning species. Of course, being one of the largest, more common species you can get, I'm not saying they're the largest, but they get fairly big. Somewhere around this amount of space, I mean, this is a pretty big chameleon. Of course, if you guys have been a fan of the channel for any amount of time, you guys remember Gizmo, my other Veiled Chameleon that we had for a number of years, was kind of the outlier in this, where he was a chameleon that liked coming out. He was a Veiled that enjoyed coming out and being on me. He'd always crawl up, crawl up to my hat, and he made a great video companion. However, now that he's passed and we've gotten another Veiled Chameleon, and with the Veilds that I've had in the past, I can say he was definitely an outlier because Veilds definitely don't like to be handled. For the most part, when it comes to trying to tame this animal down, you'll get a lot of these subtle hints. Of course, these stress pots where they get these like dark green polka dot pattern going on. They'll do the little defense karate chop positioning, um, things of that nature. And it can even get to more of a drastic situation if you really don't like a chameleon that likes to be held. You're gonna get hissing, open gaping, lunging type situation. And even in some severe kit situations, they're gonna be biting. Now, I never believe a chameleon should bite you because if you let it go that far, that's definitely on you as the keeper and you're definitely overstressing that animal. But really the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, they're really just a kind of look at this cool chameleon that climbs the vines and the sticks and all the cool stuff that we put in the enclosure. Uh, it's definitely not an animal that's going to be able to come out and be handled every day and taming this chameleon is definitely going to be a bit of a challenge just to the fact of not only are they a little reluctant and hesitant to be able to habitualize and being uh, comfortable with human interaction, but also with stressing very easily. And of course, this being an animal that it is gets stressful, it can be unhealthy and even detrimental to the animal, it's a really hard line to draw of where, how far can I push the animal without it actually being detrimental to the animal. It's kind of like, it's better off kind of just leaving it alone rather than trying to push that envelope again and then just getting these consequences with doing that. Well, moving on, let's get into species on this list that's going to be so shy that you will rarely ever actually see the animal, let alone have a chance to tame it down and be habitualized. And that's going to be number four, the red-eyed crocodile skink. I'm sure this covers most crocodile skinks, however, I've really only had personal experience with the red eyes, so I'll be speaking on the red eyes with this part. Uh, red eyed crocodile stings are definitely going to be one of the most shy and reclusive animals you will ever own. In my years of owning crocodile stings and breeding crocodile stings, I have rarely ever seen any of my reptiles or any of my crocodile stings out and about. They're usually under a hide, which of course you have to give them multiple hides in order for them to feel secure and safe and not stress out. Of course, any of that detrimental stuff we don't want. And that's mostly what you're going to get. You're going to get an empty enclosure. Might as well make it nice because you're really never going to see that animal. And that just pushes taming the animal that much harder. I mean, not only are you gonna have an animal that's reluctant to be handled, reluctant to even be seen by you, if you enter the room, it's gonna dart for the nearest enclosure, 
How do you tame an animal when it doesn't even want to be outside of you, outside of the enclosure, out of its hide while you're even in there, let alone actually interacting with the animal itself? It's definitely a challenging thing. Personally, for me, I never even attempted to tame down my crocodile stinks. It just, I feel like it would have taken so much time that I just did not want to put the effort in. I'd rather just have or build a really nice aquascape pladarium that I house them in or just really nice bioactive vivarium to house them in and just have a really cool enclosure to look at. Now, it's not to say that taming them is um, in completely impossible. Of course, there's been traders like Reptiliatus. He has a great section on his crocodile sinks where he's actually tong feeding him and things of that nature. He can seize them. He sees them outside of the enclosure, which is definitely a very impressive thing and big props to him. Was, like I said, just give big props that he was able to pull that off. That definitely is an impressive tactic to tame down a crocodile skink. All right, we talked a lot about animals that are a little bit more shy and reclusive, but there's really no ill effects to the keeper itself. You know, a, a chameleon bite's not going to ruin your day. It's going to be like, oh, it's trying to bite me. I mean, the, the jaw pressure has got to be like nothing with a chameleon or a crocodile skink. So let's move into some animals that we're taming this down. It's actually going to hurt you as a keeper rather than just frustrate you. And that's going to bring us to number three, the toke gecko. Uh, the toke gecko, the junkyard gecko, the aggressive little demon geckos as the stereotype goes. These geckos are notorious for being defensive, aggressive, and all around just a mean species to work with. So over here at DBCB Exotic, we have proved out all those stereotypes that they are just a demon mind-boggling thing that just wants to bite, 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 but it actually showcase them to be a quite intelligent species. Of course, having parental instincts, being able to see them in these colonies, in these groups, having mom, dad, a couple of clutches of babies in the own enclosure, we can see these animals have some sort of intelligence. And the fact of the matter is, they're not just these mean, nice, nasty things, but they're scared, they're defensive. I mean, if you think about it, they're a gecko that only ranges about 12, 10 to 12 inches long, and you are a giant five, six foot animal coming in and trying to pick up this gecko, I'd be scared too. I don't know anyone who wouldn't be scared of a giant's coming in this hands just like, come here, little one. It's a scary thing at the end of the day, and it is really hard trying to break that defensive mechanism of the toke gecko. Of course, as babies, you're gonna get them to be running around, scurrying around, and of course, a gecko that's only, well, around this big, it makes it quite of a challenge if you have an open area like a reptile room, all these little gaps and crevices the gecko can run into. A quick five minute taming session can turn into, well, a 30 minute long hunt trying to find this tiny gecko in a Room. Of course, that subadult gecko isn't going to be a subadult forever. He's going to turn into an adult gecko, that 10 to 12 plus inch animal that does pack quite a punch. Of course, all these jaw and cheek muscles are meant for one thing and one thing only biting. Biting and not letting go. Of course, nicknamed the Pitbull Gecko, when these things latch onto you, they really don't like letting go too much. And it makes quite a not fun experience when you have a gecko with that much jaw pressure biting down in your hand. Of course, you've seen on the channel, if you're a fan of it, we have gotten quite a few bites here, quite a few scrapes, bruises, and uh, bloody fingers to say the least, but that's never deterred me from taming down this gecko. However, I think it's been known well, Dakota's a little messed up in the head. I'm not the normal reptile keeper. And it does show that these normal reptile keepers, a lot of people don't want to have to deal with this. Deal with this giant gecko, of course, the second largest gecko you can own in captivity, trying to bite you, trying to gnaw you down, waking up every day, you know, trying to tame this animal down, getting bloody fingers, scrapes, having bandages all around your hands and fingers. It's not that fun of a thing. It's definitely why a lot of people say that this is a display only gecko. I don't believe that for any amount of time. You know, I think the Toke gecko's definitely tamed down. It's been shown in multiple ways that the geckos can be tamed down. I have a tamed gecko myself that doesn't really bite me, but rather just tries to hop off, more like a crested gecko, if you will. It can be done. The damages that you suffer while trying to get it done might not be worth the effort for most people, but at the end of the day, when you're able to tame down this animal, there's no better feeling than having a gecko jump on you, lick you, and just walk around instead of, well, you know. That's about three months of it, but you can get a tame gecko out of it, and that's the best part. But all right, getting down this list, we only have a few more animals to talk about. That is gonna bring us to number two, the emerald tree boa. This is a reptile I'm sure most of you don't know I actually own. I rarely ever make videos about it, but yeah, we have an emerald tree bow. It's usually my wife's. It's in another room, not in the reptile room, and man, oh man, this is a snake that you just cannot tame down. <laughs> a few reasons why I believe the animal tree boa is one of the most difficult reptiles to tame down. Uh, number one, it's an arboreal snake. It's been known that arboreal snakes are a lot more flighty and a lot more defensive than your average ground dwelling snakes, like stuff like the red-tailed boas, uh, ball pythons, things of that nature that seem to tame down a lot easier. The animal tree boa definitely isn't that. It's an animal that 
snaps first and asks questions later at the end of the day. And now pairing the Emerald Tree Bow's defensive nature to its size. Of course, Emerald Tree Bow is getting somewhere around four to six feet in length, depending on the sex, you know, male or female. Uh, that's a fairly large animal. Not the biggest out there, of course. We got retics, Burmese pythons, things of that nature. However, the Emerald Tree Bow gets a respectful size. That's not the thing that really seals the deal of it being hard to tame. What really comes down to it is the overdeveloped teeth that this animal has. Emerald tree boas have one of the largest teeth I have ever seen on a snake. They are absolutely massive. These teeth being utilized, like we mentioned, the tree boa being, well, an arboreal animal, tree boa, emerald tree boa, uh, they're mostly kinking the uh, avian variety, birds, and they're gonna need some pretty large teeth to break through the feathers and everything, getting into the skin and sticking into that animal animal. Not only are those uh, teeth good for sticking into, through feathers, into the bird's skin and bodies, um, it's also good with latching onto your hand. My god, I've never witnessed a more painful bite than with my emerald tree boa. It hurts. That's the least I can say. Our emerald tree boa isn't even full grown. I give it probably like the juvenile to sub-adult ranging around uh, one to two years old. Uh, it's still a baby. It still has a lot to grow. And already, man, those teeth hurt. When they puncture you into you, man, you are gonna bleed no doubt. You're gonna start leaking out. It's not like your average bite, you know, with a, like I mentioned, ball python boa. You get these little, little pinchers. It looks like thumbpricks printing into you. Maybe it bleeds a little bit. No, you are definitely gonna feel the pain of the emerald tree boa's bite. These, I won't say them like canines. They are absolutely massive. And when they sink into you, oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts so bad. Not only does it hurt, you actually also have to be very careful. Of course, like most snakes, their teeth can break very easily. This isn't an animal where it, when it lunges into you, you can just try to break away or flinch. You end up hurting and breaking the snake's teeth, which can lead to negative effects. You know, infections, sepsis, things like that. They're gonna get infections in their gums with that broken tooth. It's gonna be harder to eat prey, things of that nature. So you have to be very careful with it. So you have this as far as an animal that's tamed. You have a animal with a mean demeanor, mad demeanor, very defensive animal that inflicts a lot of damage. Of course, those very large teeth that you also needs to be very uh, comfortable with, very uh, slow and easy with. It's a very fragile animal. Not only, like I said, those teeth can break, its tail seems to be very uh, vulnerable as well to breaking as well. So you gotta be very comfortable and easy with this animal. No rushed movements, no flinching, things like that, or you're gonna hurt it. That makes a package that, well, seems very, very difficult to tame down. But alrighty, folks, getting down on this list, let's talk about an animal that not only is difficult to tame down, but can inflict some pretty bad damage at you at the end of the day if you're not careful and doing things right. And that is going to be number one, the Argus Monitor. Of course, this can apply to a multitude of different monitor species. Uh, personally, I'm just choosing the Argus Monitor because I have personal experience with it. I own a breeding pair of Argus Monitors. Now, you can apply it to like Savannah Monitors, Nile, things of that nature, but we'll be talking specifically about the Argus. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Argus Monitor. You have a medium-sized monitor, uh, ranging somewhere around three and a half to almost five feet in length. Again, depending if you're having a male or female. This is a large lizard. It's nothing like a four to five foot snake. You have a beefy animal, somewhere around the 20 pound range, a heavy mobile lizard with sharp claws, big teeth, a tail that can whip you and leave some marks, a very equipped animal to deal damage. And now, I don't think it's any surprise when I say the Argus monitor isn't the friendliest monitor out there. They seem to have a stereotype of being mean, huffy, puffy lizards, and that stereotype can hold true in some perspective. I have had a uh, I guess I would say difficulties handling my Argus monitors and working with my Argus monitors. They are definitely a little bit more reluctant to be habitualized and right off the gate when you open the enclosure, when you're hanging out with them, you're gonna get a lot of huffy and puffiness. curling that tail, getting ready to cock back and whip you as hard as it can. Uh, of course, when you're trying to handle it, if you're trying to move it, you know, so doing spot cleans, anything of that nature, you're gonna have these claws just digging through you with, of course, the weight of the Argus monitor trying to get away. It's gonna leave some marks. It's gonna be not that fun of experience at the end of the day. Lo and behold, I have yet to tame down my Argus monitors. That seems to be a, a revolving pattern in this video. I talk about these hard animals to tame and how I just haven't decided to uh, push the envelope and get in there. I've worked with tokes a lot and I have made some tamed, tamed tokes. However, the Argus monitors I'm still trying with. Almost a year and a half later since we've got this pair, 
not much has been done. They definitely are a little bit more friendly towards me. They take food off the tongs very easily, but this is a highly food motivated animal, so I really didn't think that was going to be much trouble. Um, they're able, I'm able to walk around with them. I mean, of course, we got, the, you know, the lizard arena, like I like to say, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's that video right there. So these animals are out and about in this large area. I can walk around them if I keep a semi good distance and they're not going to freak out and run away as soon as they see me. They're getting a little bit more calm in my presence. However, Getting close to them is another thing. Touching the animal is another thing. Holding the animal is another thing. We're not there yet. I do believe patience and time is the ultimate key for taming down the Argus Modern. Well, we still have some hurdles to go through. We're still definitely nowhere near where we can be. It's not to say that it can't be done. If you're thinking to yourself that you want to grab an Argus Monitor and try to tame it down, um, you're gonna get some damage done to you. You're gonna get a lot of uh, nails scraping into your skin, tail whipping. I've actually had some bruising from one of my bigger monitors. They've actually been able to tail whip me and it left a quite little mark, broke some blood vessels, uh, things like that. Biting doesn't seem to be too big of a deal, at least from my personal experience. I haven't had the animal actually try to lunge out and bite me like I do with some of my like imported tegu lizards that seem to be a head first chomping down. The Argus monitor doesn't seem to be that, so I don't think biting is too much of an in issue. I've had had bites done to me before from a uh, food response. I had the tongs too close, and they ended up getting like a pinky or a thumb. The bites. Ooh, the bites are not fun, man. Like little tiny needles digging into your thumb. But it doesn't stop there, especially if it's a food response. They try to drag you back. And of course, what the Argus Monitor is good at, thrashing, thrashing, man. Oh, it hurts. It's not a fun experience in my, uh, in my personal experience. It hurts real bad. If you try to grab the animal, it's gonna freak out even more and like rip into your thumb. It's really one of those things where you kind of have to like follow the animal that it drags your thumb into some part of the enclosure to try to rip into and you kind of just got to deal with it. Of course, just like snakes, you don't want to break in the teeth or anything like that. You just are uh, well along for the ride as it clamps down into your flesh with its teeth and big mouth. <laughs> with all that being said and all the uh, ill effects and detriments that can occur to you while taming down the Argus. It's definitely not delayed me or deterred me in any way, shape, or form because, man, I just think it'll be awesome to see the day where an Argus monitor comes out, climbs right up to you, doesn't fear you in any way, shape, or form. That is the day I am waiting for. And it's what keeps me going when I get those tail whips, those nail marks, dealing with that huffing and puffing with for 10, 20 minutes at a time, not really getting that far. I know one day I can break through that animal and one day, Maybe just one day we will have a friendly Argus monitor on the channel. Well guys, that is gonna wrap it up for today. What did you guys think about this top five list? I know there are a bunch of animals that I can go into, you know, reticulated pythons, uh, Nile monitors, or a few to list, but I really wanted to stick with animals that I had personal experience with. Not only is it better for video content, you know, you get better B-roll, things of that nature, but I don't like too much talking about animals I don't have much experience with. It's not something I want to do very often on the channel, but let me know. And as always, if you guys wanna check me out on some other places, I'm always on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, not to mention Patreon. Yes, yeah. patreon.com slash dbcbexotics. This is where you get the behind the scenes take of everything that's been going on within my breeding business, DBCB Exotics. This includes a plethora of animals you got going on right now for breeding products, you know, New Caledonian geckos, tokes, cave geckos. Uh, we've got some larger lizards that we're gonna be working on next year, tegus, aki monitors, argus monitors. It's a lot of fun stuff you definitely don't wanna miss. You get the first look with everything that's been going on there, all the breeding projects, new projects that we're getting in, news that happens before I show anyone to the public. You also get first dibs on the babies I produce, and it's even higher tiers where you can get discounts on those babies and of themselves. A great place to be, it starts as low as $1 a month, if you guys want some more information or possibly to join my Patreon crew, you can check that out right down there in the description below. As always, folks, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to follow me over here at DBCB Exotics. We'll see you next time, but until then, goodbye.